Hi there. So it's Sunday and it's time for Tulip Poplar Medicine again. And today I've had a little bit of trouble getting moving and getting going to share Tulip Poplar's medicine. It's been a slow day for me. And as I've been resting, feeling what medicine of Tulip Poplar's wants to come through, I realized that I have been embodying <laughs> the medicine that is wanting to come through today. So today, I have been very gentle with myself. Very gentle with myself. I have not pushed myself <laughs> in any way. I have tended to myself. I have cared for myself. I've been very gentle with myself today. And it's curious because that is the medicine of Tulip Poplar that has been wanting to move through me since this morning before I made the connection between my embodiment of humanity today, of what it is to be human, my expression today, and Tulip Poplar's medicine. Hey, Paula. So part of Tulip Poplar's medicine is the medicine of gentleness and tenderness, hands down. This is what I've experienced being with the tree, um, working with the flower essence, with the tincture. This is what I've experienced shift and change in me and also in those around me. And also when I sit in sessions with people or classes and I pass to a poplar, this is, uh, these are the words that come up, gentleness, tenderness. Sorry, I have a little something in my throat. <laughs> oh, you need it for today too. <laughs> Maybe it's just that day. There's a lot going on <laughs> in the world and in the sky. There's a lot of energy. So, Tulip Poplar has deer medicine, which to me, has many different expressions, but one of the primary expressions of deer medicine is gentleness. Anytime I'm driving or walking and I see deer, that is part of what I'm reminded of, is that there is uh, a gentleness that I'm needing to embody at that time towards myself, towards others, towards a situation. Gentleness is in order. Tenderness is in order. And I will say as I speak to that, that that gentleness that deer medicine expresses is also strength. Hey, Grace. There is a strength. There is a power in the gentleness and the tenderness that is deer medicine. And as one of my um, friends, students, clients said, Paula, who's actually here with us, she talked about the softest strong. And for me, deer is one of the animals that most embodies the softest, strong, the gentlest power, um, the most tender strength. So this is part of Tulip Poplar's medicine is gentleness, tenderness with ourselves, with others, with situations. This is primarily expressed, <laughs> well, Maybe I shouldn't say primarily, but it can begin with just the energy that we're cultivating in ourselves, in our hearts. What What is in our heart? What is there? Is it, you know, aggressive and forceful? Is it like this? Or is it uh, soft and open and um, receptive? Sorry, there's a little note coming up. Um, what is in our hearts? Is gentleness and tenderness what we're cultivating there? Or is it another way to think of um, a, a different aspect of deer, maybe stag? It's like lo the antlers locking, and that's not what we're going for here. So then, as we're cultivating that internally in our hearts, then it starts to find its way in how we're expressing ourselves. So there's tenderness and gentleness in how we're moving through the world. So we think about the deer and the grace that's there. So how are we moving through the world? How are we speaking? What are we saying? 
What is our tone of voice? What are our mannerisms like? And then this moves itself fully out to, hey, Lily, <laughs> to touch, to physical touch, gentleness and tenderness and physical touch. So those of you that have join me for tulip poplar medicine and other places i'll talk about not so much deer medicine but i'll talk about the dragon medicine the dragon aspect of tulip poplar and there is so much to the dragon medicine which will make its way into the world through many many videos and offerings but part of that is um the dragon that's guarding the treasure and the inner sanctum the innermost, uh, to borrow a term from the Christian scriptures, this idea of the holy of holies, the inner sanctum of ourselves. So this is part of dragon medicine. So when we are wanting to connect with the most vulnerable, intimate, sacred, holy place inside of another person, um, not only physically, but spiritually, emotionally, like their soul, a soul connection, gentleness and tenderness. I remember reading a book um, several years ago, and it was such a lovely book. I wish I could remember the name at the moment. If I do, I'll share it as part of the, as part of the comments or the notes. But the woman who wrote it spoke about how the soul doesn't answer to like busyness and hurriedness and loud noises and yelling and lots of activity. Like the soul will hide from that. It will go and it will sort of, you know, maybe tuck itself away under a tree, which I'm all for, <laughs> um, until it's quiet, until there's a stillness, until it's possible to, to come out and to be in the world. Sorry, there are motorcycles outside, which is really interesting considering I'm talking about uh, gentleness and, and tenderness. <laughs> so funny how the medicine sort of like weaves and there's juxtapositions or whatever. Yeah. So this is, this is what we're needing to keep in mind when we're wanting to connect with other people, most especially in our most intimate connections is gentleness and tenderness. So another way that I like to share Tulip Poplar's way of making this possible for us is to say, bye Grace, is to say that Tulip Poplar has the keys. It has keys. So keys like mm, codes, ways to unlock our ability to be tender, to be gentle um, with others, with ourselves. So if we think of this inner sanctum, this holy of holies inside of us, you know, and maybe who knows how many doors between here and there, <laughs> right? Um, and those doors, they can't be forced open and they can't be kicked down. That's not how they work. There has to be a, a gentle opening of them, a willingness. So how does that happen with keys? These keys that teach like the gentleness and the tenderness that's needed to meet this person in this place and sort of not only open the door, but like where it just sort of gives way or sort of melts like, an, you know, open the door like a reception or receiving. So Tulip Poplar somehow, I'm not sure yet, maybe someday I'll be able to explain it, provides the keys for these doors, for these codes, for these ways of being so that we can learn how to be gentle and tender with ourselves, with others, with circumstances. And like I said, I find this especially useful when you have people that are coming together intimately, intimate relationships, intimate ways. And Tulip Poplar is a beautiful tree that has medicine of the feminine and of the masculine and both of which have their own expressions of gentleness and tenderness. But in my experience with this tree, it seems to especially want to help those that embody um, the masculine energy to find ways to be gentle, to be tender, just 
uh, turn down the volume, you know, just a little bit, lighter touch, like a feather, all the way around, like with your hands, with your energy, with your tone of voice, like there can be strength while there is also, you know, softness. So one of the times when I was in a group sharing tulip poplar medicine, this was the first time that tulip poplar uh, chose to share or express the masculine energy that was there up to that point I had only experienced the feminine energy or maybe what I would express as more of a, a neutral energy and part of that is because I just wasn't really ready for the masculine energy of that uh, plant yet but the day that that happened <laughs> everyone in the group like smelled leather and you know, cologne and aftershave. And it was like just really uh, bizarre. And the image that was like coming to people's minds was that old image of like the Marlboro Man. Am I saying that word correctly? Or also the actor, um, Sam Elliott, who used to be in like all of these um, sort of Western films. He even pulled out a video like to listen to his voice. But the idea was a lot of those like songs that you hear where you know, there's the man and, you know, he's out and he's on the ranch or he's outside and, you know, he's got the leather gloves on and he's wrangling this and handling that and doing all this sort of work, you know, but then he comes back and takes off the gloves from this, that kind of work and suddenly like, um, hands of like velvet soft. Like that's, that's a possible way that he can also embody um, his energy. That's a, another way that he can express his energy. And it's just such a really lovely balance. So you think about it as like, when we think about the feminine and the masculine, we think about the masculine often will describe it as a container, like something that holds us, that carries us, right? So <sighs> Who wants to be inside of a container that's like, you know, jostle, 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 you know, bump, 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 knock, knock, and you're like, you know, trying to hold on to things like when you're in the back of a car or something. You know, the preference is like being held in a container, like gentle, smooth ride, like you don't even know you're moving, right? That's sure, that's secure, that confident, that's strong, that's soft, that's, it's beautiful. I love it. Like, Someday I will have more words, you know, to describe it. That's one of the ways that I feel about the plants and some of the medicine that I experience through them is it, it needs to be experienced. It needs to be felt, you know, by the heart, by the spirit, by the body. So another aspect of this before I finish today is with the tenderness, with the gentleness, what comes is patience. This is another part of tulip poplar's medicine. Honestly, more than any plant or maybe person or experience that I can think of, this is a consciousness of being in this 3D physical world that has been endeavoring to show me what it means to be patient, what it means to move slowly, what it means to take your time and to know that, you know, in taking your time, um, you're not behind, you're not losing anything. There's no weakness there. Like there is a wisdom here and that in doing this in a gentle, patient way, you're going to get where you're going and it's going to be graceful and it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be solid and sure. And part of the way that Tulip Poplar expresses this in an animal way, so we have the deer and the dragon, is the heron, the blue heron, just like, oh, wow, I just got like another connection with blue heron to a poplar. <laughs> um, this stillness, if you've ever seen this bird, and so many are like it in this way, but just still, perfectly still, waiting all day in one place, in one position for the fish. Or when it begins to lift from the water, it's not some sort of hurried, you know, with some birds, you know, you'll, it's just like flap, 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 and there's water everywhere, and suddenly there's a flurry of activity, like, that isn't blue heron, like, it's just, it begins to be like this really slow, graceful way of, like, lifting itself, you know, up out of the water, this slowness and this patience 
with the process, with the waiting, you know, with the lifting, with the soaring, with the being, with the living, with the knowing. And this, this is not easy, or at least I don't find it very easy. And so I think this is part of why Tulip Poplar has become such an, uh, an ally for me, a support for me, is this patience. And this is what's needed if we're going to be expressing gentleness and tenderness in the world. If we're going to be embodying gentleness and tenderness, we're not going to be able to do that. If we're like hurried and in a flurry, we're going to have to bring in like the patience and the slowness and the intentional purposed movement in the world. So we can obviously see how this is also connected <laughs> to physical touch, to our words, to our voice. You know, it's okay with everything, everything, with life, with conversation, with relationships, with interactions, with processes, with everything. It is okay to just slow down. Like, if we're going at eight, why don't we just kind of notch it back to a seven? Or how about a six or a five? <laughs> or if we're at a six, why don't we just notch it back to and just see like what happens, what is possible in a slower mm, pace, what is possible in a slower vibration or energy, what can happen here, what words will I choose if I slow down, what tone will I use if I slow down, how will I touch this person if I slow down. What choices or decisions will I make if I slow down? What will I create if I slow down? Who am I if I slow down? You know? Yeah, Paula says it's the opposite of what our culture expects from us. <laughs> yeah, it's so very true, which is part of why I feel like it's a, a medicine for this moment in so many ways, not just this one. Like, it's not... What are the words? I'm losing words. It's, we lose it. It's elusive. It's gone. It disappears in the hurry. The moment it's gone, like it's lost. The, the opportunity to take a, a second and in slowing down, turn it into like minutes. Like to suddenly like, pause time to make it timeless and to see what's possible you know in that space you know like what if we did that like <laughs> with all the business this idea of productivity but if we did that how much more would fill our days how much fuller would they be or if we're in a conversation how much richer would the conversation be how much deeper where would we go or if you're intimate with someone and and you're with them physically if we slow this down what else is possible what else can be experienced what more connection is here like this idea of busyness makes for productivity makes for more is ridiculous it makes for less that's what it that's what it makes for <laughs> to slow down to give space to be patient and again oh gosh back to this masculine energy of the tulip poplar which I don't often focus on, but this container that suddenly has more space and more space and more space to hold more, to hold more, to hold more in this container that the masculine is also often offered as stillness. What is possible in stillness? What can be held here? Like, the answer that I feel rise up in me is like infinity. Infinity can like be held here, you know? So this is the medicine that I want to share today of Tulip Poplar, this medicine of gentleness, of tenderness, of patience, of deer, of dragon, of blue heron. And I often talk about this plant in a feminine way, but today the masculine energy was wanting a little bit more attention and what's possible um, with the masculine expression of this plant. And even, you know, this is in both of us. I'm not just speaking of that 
as we think of with men, though a lot of men could definitely use Tulip Poplar and receive her keys. <laughs> but even uh, those of us that embody the feminine more, um, to tap in also to that part of us because the society, the culture, calls for an imbalance in these things in all of us, you know? So I'm going to sign off now and continue to be gentle with myself uh, for today because I'm not finished. I'm not finished with being um, gentle with myself for today. Thanks so much, Paula. That's so kind of you. And I don't know, I'll say at the end, my outfit, I think it's going to become my tulip poplar outfit. I wish I could stand up and like show it to you. It's this sweet little green jumper with like little poofy sleeves and little bits of gathering, but I love the green. It feels like tulip poplar. So that's what will be here. So thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to download this and reshare it so that those of you who came in a little later can watch it um, another time and it's available for others. And if you found this medicine good and helpful when it finds its way up onto the IG grid or YouTube or wherever, send it on and share it because the world is in need of gentleness and tenderness and patience and dragons and keys. We desperately need them. Okay. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.